Hello and welcome to the Year of Weather 2021. This is UMETSAT's look back on the weather last year. My name is Mark Higgins and in this video we're showing you UMETSAT data and data as well from our friends and partners around the world to give you a fully global perspective. It's January. It's the Northern Hemisphere winter and the Southern Hemisphere summer. In the southern region, you can see those summer storms just flaring up over the land. If you look at those land masses, you'll see some very bright localized spots. Those are summer thunderstorms. And you'll also see a few tropical cyclones. So the warm waters that are there will fuel those storms as they travel across the ocean. If those storms travel across a cooler part of the ocean, they'll then die away. If the heat from the ocean sustains the storm, it might then go over land, and of course, that's when it's the biggest risk for human populations. So it's now the beginning of February. One thing to notice in February was the really deep, deep cold spell that came to North America. And that was due to the, the jet stream, the air being driven south and dragging down this cold, cold Arctic air for really quite a sustained period of time. Now on this image, you can't see it so clearly because what we're showing you here are the clouds, but you can see it very clearly in some of our water vapor imagery. So there we're showing you the, the where all the moisture is in the atmosphere, where the dry parts of the atmosphere and the shape of the jet streams. And that's when you can really start to see the structure of the atmosphere and the dynamics within it. You'll see those storms as they travel across North America. They then travel across the Atlantic Ocean and over towards Europe. And depending on where the high and low pressures are will also depend on which countries are affected in Europe by those storms. If you're interested in some of the specific storms, do have a look on the UMATSAT website where you'll see some of our case studies from the individual storms that are happening. And you'll also see a whole range of things that you can't see in this animation. One of the things is volcanic eruptions. So the actual eruptions itself, we get a lot of data about that. And particularly at this point in March, there was quite a few little eruptions from Mount Etna. Now we can see those from the more fine imagery, but we can't see them here. The other thing you'll notice is the clouds in the tropical region, that daily pulsing sort of becoming brighter and then disappearing a bit, brighter and disappearing a bit. And they're bringing the summer thunderstorms over the tropical region. What you'll notice as the year progresses is how that band of cloud moves north as the Northern Hemisphere will move into summer later on. Just at the beginning of April, you'll also see an interesting effect as tropical cyclone Siroja eats another small cyclone nearby, a thing called the Fujiwara effect that then leads to the strengthening of that original cyclone. So we're now moving into Northern Hemisphere spring. At this point, there's a bit of high pressure over the European area, and you can see there's not much cloud moving over. That means that in some parts it gets really quite dry during this particular part of the spring period. So just take a look over, say, the European area. What you're going to notice is the patterns of the storm systems and the weather systems that are moving over. Where you see the storm may be bending slightly to the north or slightly to the south, that'll be symptomatic of a high pressure in that region and sort of the general global circulation that steers these storms' patterns. But what you'll also be able to compare with is some of the summer storms that now start to kick off. So where you see little puffs of cloud that build up and become quite large, those are symptomatic of the European summer storm seasons just starting. You'll see them first appearing in the Iberian Peninsula and then the southern Mediterranean countries and moving north. And this year we had quite a destructive storm season in Europe. In the middle of June, we saw significant storms over the Czech Republic and surrounding countries leading to some tornadoes. Now, in the Czech Republic storms, there are also tornadoes associated with that. So the storm rotation gets really, really strong and then leads to very, very localized spinning, which is the rotational effect and the, the tornado. And that then travels and brings devastation, but to very, very focused areas. Very tricky to forecast exactly where they'll come. And you can see in the storm season the, the pulsing of the clouds. As the sun heats up the land, you then start to see the growth of those storms. They merge 
and then they bring that rain. And so you see that sort of pulsing effect during the day. For the German season, what we saw was several uh, rain events coming one after the other, leading to some quite significant buildup of water on the ground and then significant rain leading to significant flooding. And this is why, of course, we have all of this data and why it's available. So our primary purpose is to support weather services in protecting life and property. We also save all of that data so that we can produce the climate records and support the world's climate activities. Now, we, of course, don't just watch the clouds. We watch the atmospheric composition. We watch fires, we watch dust, and we watch the quality of the ocean. But it's the clouds you can see here and the progression of the weather and the changes in the seasons. Now, while we've got that storm season developing in some parts of Europe, in other parts of Europe, we're starting to get much deeper into the fire season. So across the Mediterranean countries, the Iberian Peninsula, we're seeing a lot of fires. Now, in these particular images, you don't see them so strongly, but in some of our other products, you can see those effects. So for example, at this point in August uh, 2021, there were some very significant fires across Greece. Now that led to quite some air quality issues and people locally were having to take quite a lot of action, stay indoors and stay out of the smoky areas. And at the same time, you can also now see we're seeing more storms across the northern oceans. Let's cast our eyes wider and have a look at the Atlantic hurricane season. Now you'll see for these storms, they get born just off the coast of Africa. So those waves of tropical events that you see just coming across the continent, they set up disturbances in the airflow. Some of those disturbances, as they go across the ocean, get a little bit organized. That organized system travels across warmer waters, which gives it energy, which feeds the storm. Those storms then grow and develop, travel maybe across the Caribbean, and then we'll either travel across to the warmer waters or across over towards the Gulf of Mexico, or they will make a transition, turn north, and then either hit land on the eastern seaboard of the US and Canada, or actually curve round, go through what we call extra tropical transition and become a southern storm in Europe. So we're moving now, end of summer, getting very much into autumn, and we're starting to see those October storms. So you'll see much stronger circulation as those storms travel across the Atlantic and over to Europe. You'll also see smaller versions of those October storms if you look in the Mediterranean region. So quite often we do get very, very strong rain events over Italy and the Adriatic uh, region at this particular point in the year. In some of our other data, we saw the sea ice minimum round about September. We're now starting to get sea ice freezing again. Of course, you won't see it in these cloud images, but that's one of the other things that we track using data from our satellites. Just before we get to the end of the year, a little note on where all this information comes from. So UMETSAT, we provide the information for the middle region, for Europe and Africa, or the middle region as it's seen on this map. The US are providing data from their satellites, and we're also getting information from Japan and for the Asia region. And all of this imagery was brought together and stitched together by Meteor France. What it shows you is the quality of the data that we all have and the importance of sharing that data around the world so that people can really use it for keeping people safe. I really hope you've enjoyed this look back at 2021. If you like, go back again, switch off my voice, choose a place on the earth, and have a look for yourself at the changing seasons that we see from our satellites and from space. And if you want more information, do visit our website at umetsat.int. There you'll find all of our case studies, a whole bunch of other satellite images. You can see the smoke, the fires, the oceans, and everything else that we can monitor from space.